to the magic word. I'm Mark, and this, with my guest today, is Mike Lovejoy Fitzgerald. Hello. Or, or is it just Fitzgerald now? Um, it's mostly just Fitzgerald now, to be honest. Lovejoy is still there, still there, bubbling away. So, Lovejoy Fitzgerald is when you're the man from the council, and it's just Fitzgerald when you're a ref. Uh, yeah, it's just Fitzgerald when I'm a ref, yeah. And um, depending on where I've worked, it's it's either it's either just Mike Lovejoy or Mike Lovejoy Fitzgerald. Um, but to be honest, in um, there's only one company where I do Mike Lovejoy anymore, and that's Infinite. And Infinite. Infinite, I'm just Mike Fitzgerald in Infinite. Uh, well, I think I'm. Well, really, so you're Mike Lovejoy Fitzgerald, but they only call you Mike Fitzgerald. They only call me Mike Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Eventually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be a Mike, like called Mike. It'd be like I'm Cher. Or Seamus. Yeah, yeah. Cher's no, better Cher. than Seamus. Like Cher, yeah. You know, etc. You know. That was beautiful. No, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to do it anymore because I'd break off camera. Yeah, so. you'd, 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 you'd also put Cher out of business. <laughs> Uh, well, she's keeping a lot of tune in business. Is she? Hi is, is she still alive, Cher? I assume she's still alive. If Cher had died, you'd have heard about she's it. She's very old. What if, what if she died God, she's between gonna recording love, this she's, and going she's, out? She's going to love this, isn't she? Hi, Cher. Hi, hi, Cher. Hi, Cher. Hi, say hello to Sonny for us. Didn't he smack her around? Did and he? Isn't he dead? Is he dead? Yeah, he's I'm, dead, I think. Sorry, if And he definitely dead. smacked her around. Did he? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh well, I didn't. I didn't know. I thought I was being. I, I thought I was being cute. Sorry. No. No. No, they don't get on. They don't get. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, might be dead. I love that. I love that. Yeah, they don't get on anymore. Yeah. Hooray for a wrestling video that's yeah, where we talk yeah. about share. Yeah. And Sonny smacking. Well, around. there's not enough of them, really, is there? No, clearly not. No. <laughs> So, I'll go off a cliff. I've been I've done this show for two. I had one simple job, and after just a minute, it's off a cliff. It's gone. Ooh. Anyway, so that's okay. Good. Product placement. It's oh, not. Yeah. I don't get paid anything by anyone to do anything. So I can say fuck and not care. Yeah. I did a swear. Uh, he asked me if he could swear. No. Yeah, I did ask if I could swear. Yeah. Um, I probably won't. But I like. To, it's nice to know I, I can. I probably will. It's nice to know I can. If I get particularly energised, sometimes I can let a swear word out. I can be a, I can be a tad rude as they say. Shocking. I'm a bad man. Have you ever said fuck in the ring? Yeah, well, I caught. I swore. At, um, I swore at a ring announcer once. Was it me? No, it wasn't you. Oh, no, okay. what happened was it was um, Jack Gallagher was wrestling Robbie Brookside in like a Ring of Honor stand. You know, like you remember the uh, Pure Division, where you had like um, each guy only has three rope breaks. Yeah, and every time you use a rope break, it goes basically. Was it was wasn't it Gallagher's gold? A gimp, a gimp Gallagher's belt. Gallagher's gold. Gallag yeah. Was it that? Like, it was in GPW. It was in GPW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in GPW, and um, and basically uh, the ring announcer refused to announce the rope breaks. So um, I said, "That's a rope break. Can you tell the crowd?" And he was like, "No." So I went, "Well, you fucking do it." <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah, and he wasn't very happy. Um, I know who this ring announcer was. Yeah, he wasn't very happy. We, oh. I, we've since we've since made up, uh, but I was uh, I was more just um, I just I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I thought he'd go okay. Because <laughs> if someone said that to you, can you? Some referee said to you, could you please announce the rope break? You'd probably, I guess, announce the rope break. Yeah. Uh, yes. In 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 Richard Parker's defence, sorry. Oh, I wasn't going to name him. Sorry, name Rich. Him. In Richard Parker's defence, he, he had no clue. He had no clue about the rules of the match. No one told him. Yeah. Poor sod. So in and I swore at him, which I shouldn't have done. And I, uh, I felt bad. I felt bad about it. I, I've said worse to Richard yeah. Parker's face. But yeah, I dropped. I dropped, I dropped an f bomb on him, and he wasn't happy. Um, and you know, he could have. You know. <laughs> I basically I went after the match was over. I I took I went I gave it a wide berth and stood in the court. Stood in what I like to call the uh, there's a bit in the GW locker room, which are, which we like to jo joyously refer to as um, Jobber Corner. So I went to wait in Jobber Corner there for it all to blow, blow over because I thought if anything happens, you know, I've got Jack Gallagher backing me up, so I'm probably gonna be all right. Uh, but no, how was Jack Gallagher in Jobber Corner? Oh no, no, he would just because he pays a visit. Oh, okay. a visit. Yeah, yeah. No, we all. It's called Jobber Corner because we all. There's like four or five of us who who, who just start getting changed there because there's the, there's the there's a, there's the really nice bit at the end. There's a there's a stage bit and there's the bit near the near the kitchen. Yeah. Which we all because all which all basically all the non GPWers. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll just get changed there. That's and, where and, yeah. I got changed the one yeah. time I worked. And we were all low on the card or doing menial jobs, so we basically <laughs> named it Jobber Corner. Right. And now, you know, last I time. I got changed in Jobber yeah, Corner. Last time, last time in Jobber Corner, to be fair, it was me, Sonner, and Jack, so at least two thirds of those people weren't jobbers. Right. But, you know. <laughs> but, Who was the jobber yeah, then, yeah. like? Uh, well, I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> uh, I, think the, I think the viewers at home can decide for themselves yeah. who the jobber was when, yeah. when the room routine. Mike Lovejoy, Sonner Durson. Um, former adrenaline champion and Jack Gallagher, bloody great technical wrestler, and also now one and zero in MMA. So a nice tash. Yeah, had a nice tash. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty certain. I think as everyone, I think everyone can tell that the job wasn't uh, that free. That came out of nowhere. Jack Gallagher work, does MMA now and wins. He won. I've I'm not it. even I've remotely surprised. I've seen it. He's incredible. I, um, he, I my were thing, you there when he when he did a fight? No, I've not. I'm not I wasn't there unfortunately because it's um, filmed. I want to watch it. But uh, I've seen footage of it. And it was uh, it was it was incredible. I shouldn't have revealed this footage because now people will hound him to see it. But, Did he poo? Um, he was he was fabulous. He was just like the best people who've never seen. I should point out anyone who's never seen Jack Gallagher do a do a proper like I say proper wrestling. You know what I mean? A wrestling wrestling match where the where the shoot a shoot where the where the finish isn't predetermined. He is the calmest man you've ever seen. It's just like like his facial expression doesn't change. And like a guy can have him in a headlock and he's just like I'm fine. And it's just like he's he's saying like at any point now I'm gonna get some a part of your body and I'm gonna pull it in a direction it's not supposed to go. Yeah. And then I'm gonna win. <laughs> and he always does. <laughs> so I mean I mean I don't I, I, I don't mean, want to fight Jack Gallagher no. ever. I'd rather fight. We'll see what happens with it really. Ten. Part of me thinks either it was he was doing people. it either he was doing it just as a one off to say he's done it, which is kind of what I think CM Punk's doing. CM mm. Punk's just doing it just so he can say he did it. Um, or he might be potentially looking if he wants to do it as a full time career. I mean, he's got Jack's just in, just like when he wants to do something, he will just like a laser beam. Yeah, it. it's why he's so incredibly good at wrestling. Because <laughs> like, it's like he, Jack will always sort of say like that when he was you know Jack toxic about five six years ago. He wasn't any good. He was he was good then even mm. then. And what he's done is he's just got even better based on what he could already do. Uh, which is terrifying. It's just like again, he's like um, he's like he's like that. What's that Marvel character? It's like Taskmaster. It's like he can wow. It's like he can see something, see someone do something, and he'll just go and oh, I'll do it. Oh, what's that? All right, okay. He'll go away for five minutes, and he can do it. It's terrifying. So you so you have an encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling and an encyclopedic knowledge of. Marvel Comics, by the sense of things. No, not encyclopedic, but I do know who Taskmaster is. Because oh, okay. I think that's a pretty cool gimmick. I mean, I know who I can, I can see you do something and then I know how to do it myself. That's pretty cool. Because I am because I am terrible at that. Like, I would watch hours of... Fo- when I was, you know, wrestling semi-regularly, I would watch so much footage of all, all these other wrestlers. And I'd watch all these great moves. And then I'd be like, okay, how do I do that? And I just, I would, I just could not... Unless someone actually physically, physically showed me how to do it, I couldn't watch it and just do it. But... Jack can watch it, and then the next day at training, he'd be doing it perfectly. Yeah, because he's, cause, was, cause, cause he's just because like he's just because he's just he's a machine. He is. I, he I, is. I swear that underneath that skin, there's a, there's a metal frame. He's made. He is a T1000 sent back, and he's rather than kill John Connor, he just wants to be a great professional wrestler. So <laughs> good, good, good for the rest of us. <laughs> True. <laughs> I actually Skynet somewhere is fuming. Don't they just call that Google these days? <laughs> oh. See what I did there? Satire. Satire. Satire, Satire alarm. <laughs> but it's fucking true though. It is, isn't it? It's, oh. I like people like I say when I sometimes say that Terminator could happen, and people look at me like I'm like, what the fuck's that? It's kind of happened. Well, it's happened already. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of happened already. You know, it, just give it all it'll take is you know, you know, you get, we're, we're getting there pretty much. You can you can get on the phone like yay big. You can play like. Xbox 360 games yeah, yeah. in perfect sort of lurid detail yeah. just on a little phone thing like that's like voodoo to me that's ridiculous I've got an voodoo I, I, a couple of years ago I got like a um, I got for a couple of years now I've had an, uh, I don't know what's it called like the tablet thing the uh, the fire the fire Kindle, Kindle, fire Kindle Fire the Kindle Fire I like my Kindle and I'm sitting sometimes and I sit there and I'm on this Kindle Fire and I'm watching say WWE Network or YouTube I'm just going like if you told me that even five years ago that I could have done this. Mm. I'd be like, what? Do you remember when portable tellies were like the most expensive thing in yeah. the world and one kid had it at <laughs> yeah, school yeah. and you were all really jealous and it was this fucking massive box with an aerial the length of your arm 
and it was shit. But everyone was desperately jealous that this kid had got like a portable telly. And now you've got 100 quid and you've got that for. Oh. Yeah, like the bike. You sound really old, like, Mike. We are, but well, I am, I am very old. I'm, 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 twen- I'm a pert to 28 years old, so. I'm a pert 37 years old. <laughs> But like you oh, know, that's a perk. I remember. Perk where it counts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But like, look at the game. Look at the Game Boy, the original Game Boy when it's it like, didn't, didn't even have game colour. Game you know? Didn't even have colour. And now look at the what's it called? The P P S Vita, whatever the hell it's called. It's ridiculous. The three D S is actually three D. The three D S is actually three D. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like the it's like the thing where like um, Dara Breen does it, doesn't he? Does a routine about how like you're trying to you're jogging along, trying to keep up to technology, and eventually technology will always overtake you, and you'll never catch it again. It's just like, but you used to go, you go, oh, stop it, stop it, I'll wait here, you keep going. Yeah. I've already reached that point. I, uh, That's not true, you're still a massive gamer. Well, yeah, but I've got, I don't play on the PC, for example. No? Yeah, no, I don't. Not because I've got anything against PC gaming, it's just, it's just, with a PS4, you plug the PS4 in, you plug the, put the game in the box, get, get, you get the game, put, put the game in the, in the machine, and then it works with, like, you know... The PC there's you've got to make sure you've got the right RAM and, and graphics card and all this other yeah. stuff and it's just for me it's a bit too much effort and I did used to I used to, about ten years ago I did used to actually properly do PC gaming like I had like you know the Sims and the like Age the of Sims. Empires and the the movies which was a, which was a really really fun game. That, is uh, that the one where you have to make? Yeah, the yeah. movies was a wonderful. It starts game. out like in nineteen thirty in the nineteen thirties and you've got to like build your own sort of like. Um, like uh, studio, and you can pick up actors and put them in films, and I end up making ridiculous films. So, like I made one called Killer Gorilla, which is which, which is a bunch of which, which is a bunch of killer gorillas killing people. <coughs> you know, that's what it says. I didn't watch that. Yeah, <laughs> I watched Mean Girls two the other day with with Fraser, and um, that was. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've seen Mean Girls one. Mean Girls one is well worth seeing. Mean there's Girls lots. 2 there's, is not. there's lots. There's lots of films that I haven't seen, which I really should. I mean, for example, I've had. I've had. The extended edition of Blade Runner on Blu-ray in my house for about two years now, and I've never even started watching it. It's a beautiful film. It's I bet it is. I, I, Blade Runner is one of those films. There's a list of films which like I've seen bits of but never finished. Never finished Waterworld. Never finished Blade That's Runner. No, no big loss. Do you know what the thing was though, right? The other two times. Do you know the other two times I watched Water, Waterworld? The first two times I saw them mm-hmm. on a boat to Ireland. Because that's what you want to show people on a boat, water world. <laughs> yeah, but I, I could never, even, 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 right, even in a confined space on a 10 hour ferry ride when there was nothing else to do, I still didn't finish water world. What did so you that's. Do? Did you just walk out? I, just, crap. I walked out and just basically walked around the ship being bored because it was, that, that, that was it more. That was a bad film. Because I was like nine and that was more fun than watching water world. That was a bad film. It was. Bad. And like, hey, how much did they spend on it? Ridiculous amount of money. And I just always loved that skit in The Simpsons where it's like one million dollars. Yeah, the skit in The Simpsons where like Millhouse wants to play the Waterworld arcade machine. It just puts about a hundred quarters in it. So Kevin Costner takes one step and it goes game over. <laughs> Insert another hundred quarters to continue. Right. <laughs> I've not seen that, but that's bit. Millhouse goes. Millhouse, Millhouse goes. Oh, what a rip! That's point. That <laughs> Millhouse. <laughs> Everything's coming up Millhouse. I was kind of like Millhouse at school. Yeah, I kind of still like Millhouse. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we never, we never, we never move on. No. The last time I had you here, we recorded an episode of um, the gaming podcast I did, and didn't we? And then I lost it. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> it was about three years ago, so it yeah, wouldn't so... been any good anyway. Not because of you, because of me. Yeah. So um, we can still, we can talk about video games if you want. Yeah, well, I, mean, I don't know how much the wrestling fans are going to enjoy it, but... And, uh, <laughs> should we talk about wrestling? <laughs> we, can talk about rest- we can talk about wrestling, yeah, we can talk about video games if you want. I was on, um, you we know... We talk about wrestling video games. Wrestling video games, uh, yeah, that's a very good one. Such as uh, WF No Mercy. You see, uh, that was my favourite too. That is the bestest one ever. Because I'm a bit of a hipster, my favourite one was mm. Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. Oh, okay. Which was No Mercy, but with Japanese wrestlers. Okay. So I had Misawa and Kabashi and Kawada on. That's pretty cool. And you could, you could unlock Giant Baba and um, Kimala. And Kimala? Yeah. Oh, fucking Kimala love was on Kimala. It. Um, Tiger Mask, the original Tiger Mask was on it. Is Kamala unlo- like DLC on the new game? 
I don't think so. Uh, I don't think I don't think they want him on the. He's cause Kamala's it's tragic, isn't it? Kamala's not on the legs anymore. No, but he was great though. And if they gave him, they I would be nice to give him some money. Yeah, they should yeah. give him money, and then I can play as Kamala. And I'd say, love that. WWE's a bit sort of because WWE doesn't like sort of like things that remind you that wrestling can sometimes be a bit morbid and upsetting. Like, it's, 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 the re- diabetes. it's the reason why, like, they never sort of, like, uh, they only have, they only basically have a rule, like, only one dead guy per year in one the whole Because they don't want it, because otherwise it would get incredibly it's depressing. Well, it's getting to the point where it's one racist guy per year, isn't it? So. More satire here. For more satire, visit, <laughs> what, is it Mark? Magic Mark's YouTube page. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly in a fucking... Buffy mood, but Donald Trump though, bell ends, bell ends. I mean, it's, 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 it's all, it's all, the work. It's not all work. <laughs> yeah. He's just a shocking, deluded racist. I think the thing is though, one thing that has pleased me is that a lot of Americans seem to agree, which which speaks well for them because you know they did they did they did elect George W. Bush twice. So you can't give Americans too much credit, but at least... Sorry, Americans, I know I'm going to offend you with that one, but he was an imbecile. He was. And I can't really talk because, you know, we've elected David Cameron, but on the other hand, you know, he, he David, David Cameron isn't really stupid, he's just an awful human being. Yeah. So, and, you know, yeah. so that's a bit that's a bit different. You know, if, if he was an absolute... George W. Bush was stupid and an awful yeah. human being. If we elect Boris Johnson, we can return to this subject. Yeah, um, oh, for the love. Oh, do you know what though, suggest, right? Yeah. Actually, I want to just go back a little bit there because I know it's going to make me sound like a bit of a sort of bleeding heart lefty, saying that oh, I David, am David, a David, heart David lefty. saying David Cameron's an awful man. He might not be. He no, is. David Cameron isn't. I wouldn't say he's an evil man. He's an uncaring man and he's a selfish man. He's a clue. And unfortunately, well. and unfortunately, in this country, as that election showed, there's quite a lot of people who are selfish and uncaring. Yeah, I um, agree with that. You know, people want to see who they're going to vote for and they want to go, how is, how is it going to help me? Mm. Which, you know, which it's, I guess it's self-preservation's why our species has survived as long as it has, but so also as working together has also enabled our society to survive as it has. So, I don't know, it's just, we'll see what happens. Like, I think that you speak to, we'll get back to wrestling in a minute, sorry, yeah. but I just want to say, you, you talk to lots of people who, because when I looked at Jeremy Corbyn winning the Labour, Jeremy Baron Corbyn when he won the <laughs> when oh he won you the, ruined Jeremy yeah, Corbyn yeah. forever da, 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 da. I that's, hate it that's what they should do every time oh. at, the labor, at the labor of sort of like uh, <laughs> the next time the they fucking all spotlight yeah. da, 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 and the booze and he comes on a bike uh, but <laughs> oh, but no, but no. he's rotten but I don't think he's ever going to win an election but you speak to lots of people who members of the Labour Party who vote for him, including my parents who are both I'm not a member of the Labour Party uh, but my parents are um, and they voted. They were pro Corbyn, and it's like it's almost like amazing. it's almost like we don't care if we lose the election, just because as long as we've got you know we're happy to throw an election just to have a leader who we who we respect, which is admirable, but doesn't really help anyone right well, now. Well, I, I I disagree with that actually. People have people were finding it difficult to forgive the Labour Party for their war crimes, and there was Blandy McBland as the um, the leader. Who lost to Evil McEvil? Evil McEvil. Well, he is evil. Um, and they replaced Blandy McBland with someone with genuine charisma, someone who made people notice, someone who's made people care about politics again. Mm. I, I, I had completely lost my shit with everything. You've got the Evil Party, the War Criminals, the Judas Party, the lovable but un- unelectable hippies and the racists. That's what you could vote for in this country. And I was frustrated. Jeremy Corbyn came in, and I agree with 90% of everything he says, and I think he's made me care again. And even if he doesn't win the election, but he is preaching, he's, he's engaged pre- with people that had, were done with politics. With you, though, he is preaching to the converted. Perhaps. And that's the thing, it's not about, I mean, it's about, I think, I think what, I think, what I do hope happens is because, um, and I did vote Labour in the last election, and the election before that I voted Lib Dem, which I'm not going to do again. Yeah, me too. Because they and betrayed me. Because they betrayed me. Yeah, as I said, um, the Judas Party. Yeah, the Judas Party. But, but what I will say is, I think that if Jeremy Corbyn loses the next election, which he's probably going to do, yeah, and he is quite old, old, and he decides to step down, I hope that time, I hope next time, they do get Andy Burnham in next time because I think what he's shown is as soon as he lost that leadership election, the first thing he did 
was he basically got behind Corbyn, pretty much yep. all of Corbyn's policies. Which doesn't mean he's a suck up, it just means he's prepared. That tells me that Andy Burnham will always put the party first and for everyone else. Yep. Which is which means and I think that you know he's shown that he is he's more centre left than left. Mm -hmm. But then again I'm more centre left than left. I'm so not. so yeah, you're more left than me. <laughs> I'm not certainly not right wing, but I am. I am I'm borderline on I'm, 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 an, I'm an egalitarian centre left guy. You know, I'm a bit of a fence sitter. Um, but and Andy Burnham appeal. I'll still vote for Labour in the next election because anything's better than voting Tory. Uh, but I will. I not vote UK. What? What's that? Off? No. <laughs> on par? <laughs> not not no. Not, not even, BMP. Even, even I would. Even I would say that if you're going to vote for between, if not Bez. Even <laughs> I would say if there's a choice between Tory and BNP, I'd rather you vote Tory. That's but, personally. Uh, you could vote Bez. You could. Yeah, the, 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 the start a political party. party. Great. <laughs> no, you did. I, my, my constituency. Well, they wasn't even keeping it real party or something. That was it. Something like that. Yeah. Mm. And um, you could vote for Bez. That was Al, sorry, sorry. Bez. That was Ali G. I think Ali G had the oh. keeping it real party. <laughs> what was it then? The, it was the reality party. Yeah. Bez. I love to tell you what though. Bez. That is real social commentary. You watch Ali Ali G. Um, the Ali in G. The G house. In the house. He decides to run for government in like stains. And I think he's... Is he an independent? I don't remember. He's, a, he, he's an independent. <laughs> Me too, isn't it, wasn't she? Yeah, he's an independent. I think the Labour guy drops out, and then at the end of the debate, he basically says to the Tory candidate, yeah, you will fuck horses. And it turns out the Tory candidate did fuck a horse, so he has to drop out as well. Like so, it's, so, 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 so it's Ali G versus the Liberal Democrat, and still the Liberal Democrat can't win. <laughs> That, that is, uh, if anything, if was, that is the most satirical thing that will happen on this show. <laughs> How have we been so satirical and I've been so all lefty kind of... Uh, let's talk about let's, let's get back to wrestling. Tell so, me so, your, so, so, so your so favourite wrestling story. I hear a wrestling story. Have you got a spud story? Everyone's got a fucking spud story. I got a spud story. He, when I first did Mike Lovejoy, he, he kept... Um, he, re, he wanted me to basically do verbatim Keith Lard uh, material. Which I was all for, but um, it didn't. It didn't really pan out that way. Uh, but yeah, you know, to be fair, Spud's actually like a really like. Um, I actually, I mean, I've not spoken to him in the past couple of years or so, but he was always super nice to me. He's lovely. I mean, like the first, the second. I think I did an FWA show down in Bridport as a referee, like in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. And I, I think the main event was Spud versus Johnny Storm, I think. Nice. And like, they would need someone to do a ref bump in the match. So like, the, the spot they were going to do was, I think, John Spud was going to like. Johnny Storm was going to be like about, he was going to be coming out the corner feet first, like he, like he was doing a Vader bomb, but because he was doing an up and over, and I was going to get a foot in the eye. So it wasn't going to be like a big sort of oh the ref's out. It was going to be oh shit, well the referee's blind. What are we going to do? So I did that, take the boot in the eye. Someone comes out, Chris Roberts comes in and finishes it, I think. Um, and then afterwards, like you know, Spud and Johnny Storm were both very thankful and very because you know they were happy the way it went. And as we were leaving the show, it's just like. Probably midnight because Spud stayed to the end. Fair play to him because I think he was helping out with stuff. And as as we were leaving, obviously I'd said goodbye to everyone already, and I hadn't seen Spud, so I just assumed he'd gone. And as we're across the street, see Spud, so we obviously so I wave because I'm off. And he made a special journey across the street to come and give me a hug and thank me. And I thought that was really nice of him. And it's like you know, and it, you those things like that. It's like uh, it's like oh, because it, it's nice. So, sometimes when you're a referee, people kind of take you for granted. So it's nice when someone actually takes the time to thank you, and it's always very, it's always very you know, nice when like people are saying, right, pick your refs, and like five people dive on me right away, put me on the shoulder, right, want you, you're a boss. You're a very, very good uh, ref. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think the reason I'm, I'm a, the reason I think I'm good, good refing is because I just I take it seriously when I do it. Mm. Um, I think there's too many people in British wrestling, in particular, who, and I'm guilty. I was guilty of this at first as well, which is like you, you want to be a wrestler. But they need there needs to be a referee, so you kind of get made into the referee. And at that point, you can either sort of half arse it because you don't really want to do it, or you can think, well, I've got a job to do, I might as well do it properly. Mm. Now, my problem was I started doing it properly, and then people wanted me to do it more. Um, but it's ended up. But it's ended up. Yeah, I lost out being a wrestler. But on the end of, end of the day, it's a blessing in disguise because, you know, there's like, there's. there's um, you don't get lumped? Well, like in the. Um, I could potentially unofficially win a Fighting Spirit Award this year because Jack Gallagher versus Zach Gibson from the Future Shock Anniversary show is like one of the contenders from British Match of the Year. So if that wins, I ref that match. So technically I was part of the Match of the Year. So that's something that I would never have done as Mike Lovejoy. So I'm, you know, always, you always think, Mike Wildfire Fitzgerald. So, you know. Do you think if there was someone who was a, 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, I was thinking if there's someone who was a bad enough referee, they could have ruined that match. So you were definitely an important part of that match. That's 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 really well, cool. I and think I think you look at like. Oh, um, did I ring announce that match as well? Oh God, we, we did do the anniversary with the models versus. Uh, yeah, Wolves. I did. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, but like you and me, match yeah, of the yeah, year. Yeah. <laughs> but like it's it's like in and um, I remember reading Mick Foley's book, Have a Nice Day, and he was he back when he was working in WCW in the nineties when Kale and Fry was running it. The match of the night got like a two grand bonus. Oh, okay. So there was a match where it was it was him versus Van Hammer in a hardcore match, and it won match of the night. They decided it was match Van of the night. Van Hammer won match of the yeah. night. What were the other matches? It's a great match. It's on one of the clashes. If you go into the okay. network, one of the clashes, and because basically. Uh, Abdullah, but Abdullah the butcher interfered in the match because like oh, Abdullah like is dressed as a cowboy and I think he attacks Cactus Jack, but like Nick Patrick was the referee. So Van Hammer not only they, they Matt, Mick, Van Hammer and Mick Foley took their share for match of the night, but Abdullah the butcher got a cut and Nick Patrick got a cut because Nick Patrick helped make the match good. Yeah, too and, right. And it, and that's and that and, and you know I think the be- the people I like working with are people who have that attitude as well because. Yeah. If you don't having a bad, having an average referee isn't going to ruin the match, but I think you have a good referee it enhances things. I would agree with that. Like, you know, like when um, when T Bone beat Cooper for the title, um, I got messages like two or three messages on Facebook because because basically the way I sell sold every Cooper title match was I didn't want him to win. Mm. I was going to do my job fairly, but I didn't want him to win. Mm. So he's going to hit T Bone with the belt, and I take it away and go, and you're not going to do it this time. You're not going to do it this time. And then T-Bone lays him out, hits him with his finisher, and as he hits him with the ET, I leap up in the air. <laughs> and then I go, one, two, three, ring the bell! Uh, like, completely go nuts and then give him the belt and then I just walk off and leave. And, like, I've got three, three, three or four messages saying, like, um, we really liked the way you were that match. And it's like, I did it in GPW when the cores were around as well. Because the whole point was I didn't want the cores to be the champion. So, yeah. like... Dave's pinning like um, who beat him for the belt in the end? I can't remember who beat him for the belt now, but was it for Dirk? Yeah, he's pinning Dirk. I'm like one, two, and Dirk kicks out, and I'm going two, and Mel's the manager at ringside. She's like, that was a free, that was a free. So, so then he goes for a pin again, one, two, kicks out, go in Dave's face, two, and then I make a special journey all the way over to the corner of Mel standing in. I go in down for the ropes and go. Two right in her face <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, he kicked out. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want this prick to win. I yeah, want Dirk Mel. to win. Yeah, Mel. Yeah, yeah Mel. <laughs> but yeah, I did it. Did, did it with Danny when Danny when Cooper was facing Sam in uh, Warrington. Did the same spot, mm. and it always gets a pop because it's like you know, you can want as a referee, you can want someone else to win, but still do your job fairly. And and that does and the similar thing at the ringside subtle, table. Yeah, and it's subtle. It's subtle things that like. Mm. Because you know you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to overact the pudding, but no. The no, way the way I see it, there's a like, subtlety to doing it as well. Yeah, it's the same reason why I sell when a big move happens in front of me. Mm. Because the way I see it, excuse me, is like if someone gets hit with a big with a punch right in the face, and I'm just sitting there going, yeah, oh punch there. People people for, for like six or seven rows back in the go, that wasn't very impressive. The ref doesn't seem to care. If someone punches someone, I go, oh. People will go, Shoo, and you do hear it like, yeah, yeah. like I, like um, um, I think again, this was like this was a match years ago. This was like Bubblegum and Wade Fitzgerald were having a match, and they were kicking each other, just kick, doing trading kicks. And the first kick comes up, ooh, then I'm going, ooh, because it's going back and forth. And eventually, I'm going, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. and as I'm doing that, the crowd are all rising with it as well. Yeah. And you know. I, I, I actually you are part of article. the show. You are part of the show as exactly. well. Exactly. I wrote an article on something similar. For um, I've got like a column in Work the Left Side. It's a fanzine. You should buy it. It's good. Yeah, do um, it. And I was writing that if the ring announcer looks bored, then surely the fans will see that and they'll think it's boring. Yeah. So I, I watch matches avidly. and But you see, you see people at shows on their phones. And it's like, really... What? I mean, it's, some, some of them it's are a so, fucking privilege to do what we some do. Some of them are live tweeting, to be fair. Well, some gosh. of them are live tweeting. If they're, they're live tweeting, then fair enough. I'll let them off for the live tweeting. But they're just. But if they're watching videos of dogs on YouTube, then or, yeah. Or texting their missus or whatever. But yeah. It's a fucking privilege what we do. We're fortunate enough to be involved in the wrestling business and not get lumped very often. 
And that's... <laughs> well, if you're a referee working with GPW... Well, yeah. Or, or, or was, Darren Bateman. They, 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 uh, well, Darren Bateman takes them by... He demands to be born, doesn't yeah. he? Uh, fair Bless play to the man. <laughs> Bless I, I, don't, I don't want... I, don't, I will never volunteer for a bump. Yeah. Uh, but like it was a again game back to GPW. There's a run in GPW where I got bumped like every, like for about two years. I got bumped in every show. Every show. <laughs> and there was it got to the point where they were like they were trying to think of new ways to bump me because they'd done it all the time. Amazing. My favorite one was the, my favorite one of all time was I was going to take. Uh, do, you remember, do you remember the Juggernaut? I remember the name. I didn't know him. Juggernaut was the GPW champion about five Wasn't years ago. Wasn't Juggernaut? He might have been, yeah, was, but like yeah. he was, um, he was a hefty lad, um, good athlete, and he used to larry at people, and he had a devastating like. There's a video somewhere of, of him larrying Ricky J McKenzie, and he la- and it's you see the larry, and you see me going, uh, but like, but like, so they, so they tell me that like I'm gonna take, uh, it's a match between him and someone else, can't remember who is wrestling now, and they said like right, okay, you're gonna take the larry. As, as the bump I went okay yeah. my body stiffens but I, go, I, go, <laughs> but, but, but I went okay cool alright because I assumed and then I suddenly went I'm going to second um, this, I was the only referee on the show and I went I'm the only referee on the show you know because like so that means I've got to come back and count the pin and they're going it's fine it's going no I'm taking Juggernaut's Larry <laughs> yeah it jobs out every, if I get up after two minutes after taking that Larry and I'm fine to count yeah. the pin it jobs out everyone who's taken it and sold it properly true and they, but they basically insisted no you're going to have to, there's no other referee you're going to have to wake up and do it. So I was like, so I felt, so I felt bad. I felt bad. Juggernaut didn't, to, Juggernaut didn't care. To be fair, he should have cared, but I His think... His opponents yeah. kind of might have yeah. done that. Yeah, but like, and I felt bad for it as well because I didn't want to get heat. Like, I didn't want people mm. to come back and go, the ref seemed to go pretty quick from that lariat and it's sort of like, you know, because I, I was like, no, no, I, if he lariats me, me, I want to be, yeah. I was I was like saying, no, no, you need to get someone to carry me to the back. This is like the most, most devastating finisher in the whole company. And I'm gonna take it full brunt. You need to like, you know, I you need to be people need to you need to call a priest and have him give me last rights at this. You know, it's like it, it, you know, I'm the referee. I should not be taking this killer finisher and being okay. But thankfully, what happened was is um, when he threw the lariat, the guy ducked and he didn't catch me full whack of it. Like he basically it ended up being that part of the hand to the face. So boom. So it still had some weight, but it wasn't a full on lariat. Right. So by so by when I that, I felt better about it then because it kind of he didn't catch me full bore. So yeah, so, okay so, the, the, so it was played as like a glancing yeah. blow. And it's just like, you know, if anyone's watching this, protect your finish. Yeah. <laughs> protect absolutely. your finish. Right. You know, because there are guys in Future Shock who would like, you know, they would not allow the ref they would they would demand the second referee come out because because yeah. cause, you know it's it's just but it's just like it's, I think I think sometimes I think maybe I think Jungle as well, because Jungle isn't wrestling anymore mm-hmm. and he wasn't wrestling soon after that, maybe he'd sort of mentally Given up a little bit and you didn't care, but similar you know. thing, right? I got hit by one forearm at um, the last New Wave show, but it was from Roughneck. Roughneck's twice my width, so that took me out for the rest of the show. I, I, I was sat in the back for 30 minutes, which is something that I've never done before. I was like, I should be out there, I should be gone then, but it took me out, and of course it did. I'm built like a pencil, and I'm not a wrestler. It's like when sexy Kevin Lana were having their wedding, and like T Bone comes out and punches the, the ref, the punches the priest, which is still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, genuinely, genuinely one of the finest things because he just because he literally he walks out and you think he's gonna fight Kev, so they're all faces. Kev's like prep, like oh there you go, and T Bone just goes. <laughs> and the priest, the priest, the priest just goes down. I just sort of, <laughs> that's like you know if there's ever a jiggy Walker angle. It's like, <laughs> so you're about Jiggy Walker, but the man can book a set piece. But like, but like that was like that, that like literally Jiggy Walker's fingerprints all over it. Yeah, lads, go punch the priest. Uh, <laughs> punch the priest, la. But uh, like, but, so like but like, seriously, just, oh, and it's just like, and again, you never saw that priest again for the rest of the show because you just because T Bone punched him. T Bone punched the priest. <laughs> And that is all we have time for on the Magic Word. Oh. Let's finish with punching a priest. He's been Mike Fitzgerald. I love you, Tebow. I've been Mark. Thank you. See you again. Godspeed. <laughs>